Williams. Uh, 33 food banks operate in Wales, two in my own constituency, one in Carnarvon and one in Bangor. In 2011, 11,000 Welsh people dependent uh, on food banks for the limited help. Now the figure is 60,000. People often go to food banks uh, because their benefits have not been paid, as the Vice Admiral Member for Birkenhead said a moment ago. There has been a mistake. Benefits have been paid too late. People have been sanctioned, sometimes wrongly so. A man came to see me on Monday. Uh, he'd been sanctioned. He had no money. Uh, he'd been called for an interview but wasn't able to go because he had to take his wife, a very seriously ill wife, actually, to a hospital for cancer treatments. And he couldn't be 30 miles away at the same time. And he was sanction sanctioned. Um, yes, I will this once. Which, uh, a, a, a gentleman in my constituency faced exactly the same. He was sanctioned, albeit he was in hospital for a, co a heart condition. He lived for a further three days on field mushrooms and borrowed eggs. Is that what we want to see in the UK in 2013, 2014? The well, gentleman makes a, a very eloquent point about the harshness of the current system. Uh, significantly, about 20 per cent of the people who go to food banks are the working poor, and uh, these are not the scroungers or the shirkers quoted so enthusiastically by some honourable members and, and also the popular newspapers. Now, the growth of food banks in Wales is a symptom, I think, of a much more fundamental problem uh, that of growing inequality and the failure of wages and incomes to match the ever-increasing cost of living, particularly food inflation. Th this is a, a particularly acute problem in Wales, where GVA in some areas is about 60% of the UK average. I give way the, uh, a second and final time. I wonder if the Honourable Gentleman has also found that the working poor are also finding it difficult to get basic products. My food bank has told me that sometimes they are having people talking to staff quietly and saying, do you actually have toilet paper? Do you have sanitary products? It's not just food, it's the expensive oh, other yes. products. Well, the Honourable Lady makes a fine point. I was at uh, the food bank <coughs> in Carnarvon recently, and they do provide a, a range of, of goods. And at Christmas time, they also provide a few extras, uh, which I think you know, is, is, is very welcome indeed. Food banks currently provide a, a vital short-term service, and they deserve our support. But they must not be a general, long-term solution for the individuals who go to them, and certainly not a permanent aspect of public policy. Food banks, if we have them at all, should supplement public provision. And it is astonishing, is it not, Mr Speaker, that uh, it is indeed shameful that in the second decade of the 21st century, in one of the richest countries of the world, we can't even make sure that our people get sufficient food. Now, uh, in Wales, uh, we have had a consistent... Uh, well, I will, actually. Uh, Thank you, Honourable Gentleman, uh, for giving way. Does he recognise the importance of welfare benefits advice? We've heard that many food banks provide this, but there are many who don't. And since we know that it's part of the reason for the growth in food banks, is the paucity of uh, proper welfare advice. was not that an important consideration in this debate? Well, it is indeed, and uh, I pay tribute to the services that we have. They are patchy, sometimes provided by local authorities and sometimes by volunteers. And I would uh, mention in passing the points made by the Child Poverty Action Group, uh, a, a very pertinent point to this debate about the value of, of advice and the level of underclaiming, of course. Uh, which is a, a consistent problem. Uh, in Wales, we've had a consistent decline in our economic performance and in people's ability to buy the food they need. The figures, uh, Mr Speaker, are, are quite stark. Wales' GVA per head compared to the UK average in 1997 was 78.1%. In 2011, it was 75.2%, a decline of 3%. For West Wales and the Valleys, which are recognised by the European Union as some of the poorest areas in the European Union itself, the figure was 67.2% in 1997, 65% in 2011, a further decline. So there is here a, a substantial historical problem, and it is a problem that is growing. Now, the remedies, I'm sure, are quite easy to list, and we've heard some of them already. Better economic growth, better income distribution, particularly in the poorest areas, uh, a living wage, uh, ending fuel poverty, uh, and, of course, uh, we have already heard uh, a number of calls, and I, I think I'll have to just proceed and finish. 
I am apologise, apologise, honourable gentleman. We call on the government, of course, to, to publish the DEFRA Commission reports into food bank use, yeah, yeah. and the government should commission <coughs> further wide-ranging uh, re uh, research into the rocketing need for food banks. <coughs> and certainly, I would make a point to the, the front bench of the, the opposition front bench. I can't see how regional benefits would, would help. Uh, Mr. Speaker, a final brief point, but it is an important one and one which hasn't been mentioned so far. Wales is not a unique case in the UK, certainly not a unique case in the European Union. We must look beyond our own borders and beyond Europe's borders yes. and fight to provide food security for people all over the world. Alan